And Skip, I'd like you to reflect on your years in student activities and student development. I know you sometimes referred to your role as, as Dean of Fun. Dean of Fun came, the Dean of Fun came out because it's hard to describe my job. I mean, I was an administrator and I, was, I coordinated student activities and all those type of things, but it was a new profession at the time. And people just didn't understand. My mom and dad, I was first wanted to go to college, they never really understand my real job. So I just finally one time told them I was just Dean of Fun. And, they, and that, <laughs> that part of it too. And they, I mean, they under, that they, I told them about the events and the part. It was kind of a minister in the day. You had all your administrative work, but also we'd, we'd start a center board which is our programming board. And uh, did a lot of programming in those days. It was a hotbed of, I mean, I remember the, one of the first years we had, uh, we had uh, the Carpenters, Barry, or Carpenters, Chicago, and Barry Mandelow and the Spinners in, in about a 30-day period, or 45-day period. <laughs> and, and really rock and rolling in the Coliseum. The first time we ever, we'd had some, as we worked on some rock and roll reviews earlier. But time, I started July 1, 1970, and the office over in the coach building, and then, then they opened the PAL building in February 72, and I moved over there as, a, as director of student activity, and we were director of the building, except for food service. Our office had the responsibility for the rest of it. And that's when it kind of began, and it, it just went by that quick. I mean, here it is, whatever year it is now, and uh, 09, and it was, that, it was like yesterday. I mean, I can think back and walk back, and I was showing pictures earlier of things that just like yesterday, but the, the groups that we had, because the, the, the colleges were the showcase for talent, because part of my job was procuring talent with center board. It really became a bigger part of my job than the real job. I mean, because that was on the side and it took a lot of hours with it too. But I spent a lot of time with programming. We had student, and that was a great opportunity for student leaders to grow because students were involved. And every time we bring a speaker in, students were involved with them. And so we start bringing big names. And Dr. Lott Martin, one of the big names, in, coming in and to provide an environment for him. I mean, he was really behind that himself. And Dr. Rowell, I worked with Dr. Rowell on that too, and finding funds and gave us funding for center board. And we involved the students in, in, in the process as, as well. But it was, it went anywhere from uh, uh, having Jimmy Buffett come in, and before he was known as Jimmy Buffett, he played for, paid, played for 50 people in the auto, Brock Auditorium. Then we, in 1990s, last time I had him, we sold out the Coliseum and had a good relationship with him for, the, for those 30 years, 20 years, 30 years, however they were, many years there were. And uh, uh, met him going to a entertainment. I picked him up in gave him a ride up to the, to the venue uh, at Bowling Green. I was going to an entertainment conference, and he was just out playing the streets, and I picked him up. He's, I didn't know who he was at the time. He was carrying a guitar. I knew he was going where I was going, and gave him a ride, and I brought him here the next fall. Mac Davis, same way, had Mac Davis come in um, in the summer before his big TV show. And he had a TV show that summer, uh, brought him in, and Vicky was teaching at Model. I said, now, Vicky, I will bring him over to this, this class. Your Vicky, wife. My Vicky, Vicky, yeah. Vicky Darty. Don't and, Ricky Nelson. Yeah, Ricky Nelson too. But anyway, uh, I brought, and we, we did him as well over to our classroom, but, but brought Mac Davis. I said, don't tell anybody though, because he came in a day early, he's going to play some golf, and he agreed to come over to the classroom. Well, Vicky told every teacher in the world, there's, there's 150 <laughs> kids in her classroom, there's six teachers, eight student teachers, and he played spoons. Matter of fact, Dan McBride was in the third grade at the time, and uh, uh, he played the spoons and played guitar for them, for the kids for about an hour, and, and then he did that show that night. and and, uh, and it's great. I mean, we always, the Carpenters came in, very similar thing. Kids went out bowling with them. Now, did you tell me, I'm, I remember when the Carpenters were here, and that was in the 70s, I guess. 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, didn't 70, you yeah. say you paid a lot more for them than? Well, we paid the whole show for the Carpenters, the whole entire show. Now, that was the only show we ever had that was a total sellout. Uh -huh. Now, we in could the, have sold out Buffett, we didn't, but it was a total sellout, Alumni Coliseum. Uh, it was the Carpenters, and it was, uh, uh, it was two. It was two dollars a ticket for students. We had a total of ten thousand dollars for the show. Students paid two dollars, and the adults paid five or something like that. But but we, our deal was to break even, and we did. But we, we had people lined up four and five deep trying to get in. But it, we, so, we, so so how much did they get? Did they? They got ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand. Ten thousand. Just trying to break even. Break even. We, you know, two dollar ticket. You sell six thousand tickets. You don't bring in twelve or fifteen. But that was sound lights and entertainment. They came in. And we picked up the day before the show. And uh, Richard and Karen, they came in, and I reserved a bowling out here, maroon lanes out here, and went out here and bowled from midnight to 3 a.m. Took students out there, and they bowled because they're on a different time schedule than we were, you know. And that was the day before. They the wanted to do that. Oh yeah, yeah, they come, they because they're traveling. <laughs> See, they're on about a 30-day tour, so they got they come in the day before and they work on some things. And, and I talked to them ahead of time. Their agent said, "What what they like to do? I like to involve our students so they could have some interaction with them." So we did we did moonlight bowling. They closed the bowling at midnight. We took it over, paid them a couple hundred bucks, and had it at midnight. Uh, uh, I mentioned one time, I never get autographs except for, I got one autograph my entire career, and that was with Bob Hope. Because my, my theory was early on, because I was really young when I started my job, I was 23, and, and, uh, and there, there was a whole difference between me and the students, it was a tie, <laughs> for the student tie. And 
I guess I'm older now, I don't wear the tie, but it, it, it was one. So I always, I had a, I really realized that if you ask for autographs, you, you're a fan instead of an employer. Mm -hmm. So that's my theory. So you, and they liked it because you didn't, you were, you, didn't you treated bug them. them. Yeah. They, they didn't, you weren't bugging, you weren't bugging for anything. So mm -hmm. except for Bob Hope. I told him, I said, I don't do this, but I really, you know, it's Bob Hope. Yeah. So, <laughs> and actually, he was 76 at the time. I said, I better get this one because he won't be around here long. He lived 24 more years. Yeah, that's right. But he was a great, the easiest going, nicest person ever to work with. Picked him up in a, of course, I had the requirement, I had to pick him up in a Lincoln Continental, I had to get him to Cincinnati, and picked him up and brought him back. And uh, his agent had come in three days early, Mark Anthony, and got local color about the specs and the restaurants, and so he could use it in his act. Well, I picked him up on, I don't forget the day of the show, whether the day of the show was, I picked him up that morning in Cincinnati. It was in April 74, though. April 74. <laughs> All right, the date had to be April 74. Uh, and picked him up, and Miss California was opening the act, and she was with him. So we got, so we got in the car, and this <laughs> Lincoln Continental only has a seat, a, the, the little console in my seat. So she sat on the seat, which is okay for Miss California sitting there. She sat on the on the on the console, and uh, <laughs> I got in the car. And said, Mr. Hope, we, three things here. We got a long trip to go. We can, uh, we can not talk. You can talk, I can listen, or we can both talk. Let's both talk. I always give him an option. <laughs> and so we talked a long way. We stopped. He wanted to stop and stretch one. We stopped on the interstate going down. Pulled him on the standard oil station there, and there's a trailer right attached to the, I guess the owner's wire, the employee there. He got out and had his little hound tooth cap on, his little checkered suit, and did his thing. He was walking around, and people come up and up, even there, come up to him getting autographs on it. Next thing you know, you see that trailer door, lady comes running out in the robe, the curlers. She comes down and gets an autograph because the guy had called her, and so he was happy with that. <laughs> uh, we came into town, had dinner at the, uh, at the Holiday Inn, had a restaurant at the time. And that's where dinner was. Yeah. And I had, had dinner with some people and, and him and that's fine, his, his agents for the show and everybody come in for the show and they were there and he was eating dinner. He'd come around and ask for autographs and they asked for my autograph and they, I said, well, you don't want mine. He said, how long have you been with him? I said, about four hours. Okay, we don't need yours. So <laughs> that was the kind of way it was. Had the show that night, sell out crowd. I mean, not totally sold out, but, but we didn't always want to sell out. That was out. a big ticket. He, he, he cost $25,000. Yeah, and he, he got paid cash. <laughs> he only wanted cash, but we couldn't pay cash, so we had to write a check and then cash a check for him. Because of his vaudeville days, that goes back to vaudeville, and he, even this, wherever he got paid, he got paid cash. Uh -huh. And he sat there and counted his $100 bills he probably out. probably got a couple of checks that bounced. And well, he probably had some in those yeah. days, but now that's yeah. his way. And Mark Anthony, they'd count that money out, you know, and I'm thinking, you know, I was 20. <laughs> Five or six, I've never seen twenty thousand dollars in my life. And here's this guy counting it out. So he got <laughs> a check and I got that controller, Howard Underbrink at the time, made arrangements to to get that done. We made a big deal of back in the room before and we paid him before the show. Going back that night, I'm going to Bob Hope's story is going back to the Cincinnati, you want to go back at night, the show was over at eleven after everything was done, we were leaving and and um, uh, that was before everything everything was closed. I mean, you know, you're talking seventy four. There weren't even a McDonald's in town. I said, anything I can get you before we go on the road? He said, well, I like to have, we're on the interstate heading to Lexington or going to Cincinnati. He said, I like some strawberry pie. I went, oh, man. <laughs> and and I, then I remember on exit, exit 104, there's a Frisch's or a big board. Jerry's. Where, a Jerry's. And they had strawberry pie. I pull off exit 104 and go down there. Right on the right, there's a Wendy's there now. They're closed. It's like about 1130. They're closed. He said, I really would like to have some pie. <laughs> so I get out and I said, don't worry about it. I got a knock on the door. I beat on the door. They wave me off. They're waving me off. I keep beating on the door. The guy finally comes over and said, what do you, I said, we're closed. I said, listen, I need some strawberry pie, really bad. I need three pieces. <laughs> he said, we're closed, we can't. I said, let me ask you a question. <laughs> if Bob Hope wanted a strawberry pie, could he get it? Well, sure he could. I turn around and look at, come on in. <laughs> and we went in and sat down on the counter at, at, at Jerry's restaurant and had strawberry pie and then everybody stopped working and got autographs and chatted with there half an hour. He had strawberry pie and, and maybe a cup of coffee. <laughs>